Yo, what's going on guys? Today I'm going to be going over the NBA slate on DraftKings for Wednesday, November the 28th. Uh, we have 10 games for this Wednesday slate. Going to go through each position and talk about some of my favorite plays at each position, the studs, uh, the mid-tier plays, and if there's value, I will be sure to touch on that as well. Of course, I'll give my core of five plays, five guys I expect to have in a lot of my lineups come lock. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Let's look at point guard on this 10-gamer. So, James Harden, most expensive point guard, along with Russell Westbrook, two guys over 10K. Harden is 11-6. Russell Westbrook is 10,900. Um, probably not going to be paying up for either one of these guys unless Chris Paul is out again. Then I will definitely be paying up for James Harden at 11,600. Uh, but I think I just prefer Anthony Davis to these guys. Love this spot for AD against the Wizards. I think he's going to absolutely go off against this Wizards team that doesn't really have anybody that can defend a big like Anthony Davis. Dwight Howard's not playing for the Wizards. Uh, he's already been ruled out for Wednesday. So I have, I feel a big game coming from AD, so that's probably going to keep me off of Westbrook. The only reason I'll play Harden today is if Chris Paul's out again. I have a feeling Chris Paul's going to play today, uh, but if he is out, I will for sure have James Harden in some lineups, even at 11,600. Uh, but point guard for me, I think there are some plays you could go to for a little bit cheaper. really like this matchup for Kimball Walker, facing a fast-paced Hawks team that's really bad defensively. Great spot for Kemba at home at 9,300. He probably would be my favorite option to pay up for if I can't get up to Harden. Or if, if Chris Paul's out and I'm not paying up for Harden. Or if Chris Paul plays, excuse me, and I don't pay up for Harden. Then Kemba at 9,300, I really like. Uh, like in the mid-range, not a ton stands out to me here. Like Ricky Rubio, I've been on a lot lately. His price is now up to 6,900, though, against the Nets. Uh, Donovan Mitchell is going to play today, I believe, or going to play on Wednesday, so... Rubio, definitely not going to be going to him with Mitchell back. Just really don't see a lot of guys I feel like are must plays in this mid-range. Point guard's really gross today, just not a lot that stands out to me, at least like core plays. There's a lot of guys that are in good spots, like Dame, obviously 9K against the Magic. John Wall, great spot for him against the Pelicans, 9,100. I think I would play Kimba over Wall. Uh, ben Simmons feels a little bit too cheap against the Knicks at 8,700. Drew Holiday, great spot against the Wizards, 8400 uh, But these price tags, don't feel like I'm going to be paying up for a lot of these guys. Just if I try and pay up for AD, it's going to be hard to fit these guys in. So maybe if we're trying to find value here, I think there is definitely value, especially if injuries break the way I want them to. Uh, so right now, Dennis Smith Jr. and Luka Doncic are both questionable for the Mavericks on Wednesday. If they miss, if either Dennis Smith miss or Doncic misses or both of them miss, I think J.J. Barea becomes a very good option at 5K. Really like J.J. Barea today. If both of those guys are out, I think J.J. Barea is probably a must-play. Good chance he starts if Dennis Smith Jr. and Doncic are both out. I uh, know last game, DSJ was out, but uh, Barea did not start. He got 26 minutes off the bench. Still put up 39 DraftKings points. Uh, Barea is a very good point-per-minute player. When he gets the minutes, he's going to produce. He's going to score. He's going to grab... Uh, grab a few rebounds to also dish out plenty of assists as well. Really like J.J. Brea today at 5K. As long as uh, either one of DSJ or Doncic is out, preferably DSJ, uh, but as long as one of them's out, Brea is definitely going to be a guy that I play in a lot of lineups at 5K. He's probably my favorite value play. You could take a shot on one of the Knicks point guards, whether it be Burke or Moutier, but I think I'd rather just play J.J. Brea. I feel a lot better about Brea for a little bit more in price. Uh, Ryan Archidiakono is coming off a big game. He's up to 3900 in price, which honestly might still be a little bit too cheap for the minutes he's playing. The guy plays 30 minutes a night. Uh, he's not a very good point-per-minute player, uh, but he did break out in his last game against the Spurs, going for 35 draft points. Uh, this is a fast-paced team. Uh, he's going up against the Bucks. do play fast, but they are solid defensively. Uh, you could go to Archidiakono. Probably not my favorite play, just because the guy's just not a very good point-per-minute player, but... He is very cheap at 3900 If I was playing 150 lineups, which I imagine I will be today, I imagine I'll be playing my 150. I'll probably have Archidiakono maybe like 5%, 10%. Not going to go too crazy on him, but uh, getting a guy that cheap playing those amount of minutes definitely will be in my player pool. But yeah, let's go ahead and move on to shooting guard now. So looking at this position, if uh, obviously Chris Paul's out, I'll be trying to pay it for Harden here. But Chris Paul plays. Other options we could go to besides Harden, like Devin Booker at 8800 that price tag just feels a little bit too much. Kind of the same with Drew Holiday. Drew Holiday would probably be the guy I would pay for. I don't love him as much when AD's on the court. 
Uh, when Alfred Payton's off the court, though, we do get a lot of ball handling for Drew Holiday. But like I said, he's up to 8400 in price. You need him to have probably 46, 47 DK points to even really be a good play at this price tag. Uh, for what it's worth against the Wizards earlier this year, he put up 38 DK points in 36 minutes. Not sure if Alfred Payton was able to play. Well, it looks like these teams just played a few days ago. Uh, Drew put up 38 DraftKings points in 36 minutes. I imagine Payton did not play that game. So Drew Holiday, 8400 you could go to, but definitely probably not a core play for me. Looking at maybe some shooting guards I'll have a lot of exposure to. Really don't see a ton that stands out to me. Eric Gordon, 5,800 if uh, Chris Paul misses again. You could definitely go to Eric Gordon. I've been on him his last two games. Uh, his price tag, though, is starting to get up there. He's up $1,000 in salary off of what he was his last game against the Wizards. He was 4800 We When we got the news Chris Paul was going to be out, it was pretty easy to just plug and play Eric Gordon. We know the minutes were going to be there. It's just all about was he going to make his shots and Shot pretty well from the field that game, 52%. Put up 45 DK points, had 36 points, 2 rebounds, 2 assists. Uh, when Chris Paul's out, it's pretty much Eric Gordon and James Harden doing all the heavy lifting for the Rockets. So I don't mind him again, even though the price is up there. I think he is a pretty fine play at 5,800. Uh, Justin Holiday continued to, continues to play big minutes, pretty much 35, 36, 37 minutes a night. He's still relatively cheap at 5,400. His price tag is starting to creep up a little bit. Uh, but getting the amount of minutes for this guy at this cheap of a price, getting a guy that cheap playing those amount of minutes, puts him in consideration for me. Uh, so I do like Justin Holiday at shooting guard if you want to play him here. But that's probably it for me when it comes to value shooting guards. Sub 5K, not a lot I love. Terrence Ross has been playing well lately. I know he had a big game against the Lakers, 37 DK points in 28 minutes. Really not going to get big minutes out of Terrence Ross. He's probably going to play about 26, 27 minutes off the bench. His price tag creeped up a little bit, off, coming off that big game, up to 4400 I guess the Trailblazers, you could go to Terrence Ross. Probably a thin play, in my opinion. Not something I'd go too crazy on. It's kind of the same with Rodney Hood. I was on him that last game, and he played uh, okay. He's played 35 minutes, 28 drafting points. He had 20 points, 2 rebounds, 3 assists. Shot 50% from the field, 4600 You're probably going to get 30-plus minutes out of Rodney Hood. Uh, how efficient he is with those minutes uh, will be something we have to see but if you want to go him I don't mind him at 4600 but let's move on to small forward now so at this position you have Giannis at 12k against the Bulls obviously a great matchup for Giannis nobody on the Bulls going to be able to slow him down but at 12k probably not going to be someone I play a lot today I'd just rather play Anthony Davis uh, so don't see myself going to Giannis much kind of the same with Paul George even at 8900 him seeing a little bit of a price decrease Great spot against the Cavs, but don't see or don't see myself paying up for Paul George. Rarely do I play Paul George unless Westbrook is out. So let's look for some other small forward plays. Jabari Parker's been playing big minutes on a nightly basis. His price tag is starting to get up there at 6,600, but this is a revenge game for him facing the Bucks for whatever that's worth. When these teams did play uh, recently, he did put up 35 drafting points in 33 minutes against his former team. I think that game blew out as well. But yeah, Jabari Parker, 6,600. You could go to if you're going to that mid-range. And then if we're trying to find some value here, if we want to go cheap, find value plays, um, not a lot stands out to me, at least early looks at this slate. Like, not a lot of core value plays I see. Maybe P.J. Tucker at 4,400. If we get the news, Chris Paul's out. You could go to P.J. Tucker. He should have to see a few more shots, but P.J. Tucker, definitely not a guy I'm going to go too heavy on. Just don't love this position. Like said, he's been uh, so like up and down lately. He's been playing the minutes, 30 minutes last game against Minnesota. Uh, but just 21 DraftKings points from Seti, probably going to be someone I avoid today, even at 4,900. So I think that's it for small forward. Let's move on to power forward now. Uh, so at the top here, obviously I've been talking about AD a lot. Love this spot for him at 11-4 against the Wizards. Uh, without Dwight Howard, I expect Anthony Davis to be able to dominate in this matchup. I don't really see anybody going to be able to slow Anthony Davis down. I think he has a, has a field day in this matchup as long as this game stays competitive. I expect a big game out of AD. I expect the minutes to be there. Uh, so for sure going to be a stud that I want to pay up for today. Whether they try and put Thomas Bryant on him, Markeith, Jeff Green, like nobody's going to be able to slow down Anthony Davis in this spot. Uh, so love paying up for him at power forward. If you're not paying up for him, I think there are a lot of good plays in the 5K range. Uh, some are based on injuries. We got to see what we get 
uh, injuries wise. But if David Nawaba is out again, then uh, you have the Larry Nance at 5,300, who I do like as a cheaper power forward. Uh, you can play him as center as well. He started last game with David Nawaba out, and he played 38 minutes and put up 37 DraftKings points. Nearly had a triple double. He had 12, 8, and 7. Uh, I'd expect similar minutes and similar production for Larry Nance as long as Nawaba is out. Uh, Larry Nance should start again if Nawaba is out. And at 5,300, just too cheap of a price tag for Larry Nance when he's starting. Uh, the guy's just so efficient when he's on the court. Great point per minute player. Uh, love him at 5,300 if we get the news Nawaba's not playing today. And then another play I like right there in price is Markeith. Uh, Markeith at 5,100. Price tag starting to creep up a little bit. Honestly, might be too, still too cheap for the minutes he's playing. Uh, without Dwight Howard, Markeith getting a lot of run off the bench. Uh, he's pretty much closing games. Pretty much every game he is closing with Dwight Howard out. I would expect him to play big minutes again off the bench. I imagine he's going to be the primary guarder on AD, which is a little scary. He could maybe get into foul trouble, but uh, if Markeith's going to get the minutes, he's definitely in play for me. Just very good point-per-minute player. Uh, he's going to score. He's going to grab rebounds when he's on the court. So I really like him at 5,100. Very strong play at small forward or power forward in the 5K range. Uh, but that's probably it for this position, uh, the plays that stick out to me. So let's move on to center now. So at the top of the center position, uh, Joel Embiid is 11-2, and he's facing the Knicks. Uh, Joel Embiid probably not going to be someone I play too much today. Uh, he's just too expensive for me. Would rather play Anthony Davis for 200 more. Honestly, would rather go down to some of those like 9K guys like Kimba I've talked about a little bit. There are other plays you could go to. Uh, there's other centers we'll talk about that I really like. So with Embiid's price tag, obviously the matchup's great, but with his price tag, probably going to be someone I don't get a ton of today. Cat's relatively cheap at 9400 but another guy that I just don't see myself going too much against the Spurs. Uh, at center, I really like the mid-range. Love um, DeAndre Ayton. He's 7300 facing the Clippers. Uh, I've talked about it a lot so far in my videos just throughout the year. We want to play aggressive centers against the Clippers. Uh, the Clippers just can't defend centers. They get torched by them pretty much on a nightly basis. Been giving up a buttload of fantasy points to centers this year. I expect that to continue on Wednesday with DeAndre Ayton. Love this spot for him. I expect a big game out of him. Nobody's going to be able to slow him down, whether they put uh, Gortat on him or Montrezl Harrell. I'd expect a big game out of DeAndre Ayton. Love this spot for him. And at 7300 with his price tag, uh, jump in a little bit for this matchup. I believe he was like 66, 6700 is what his price has been these last few games. With it jumping up to 7300, don't expect him to be insanely popular today. Uh, so I have a lot of interest him, interest in him in that 7K range. But now other center plays. Uh, Cantor continues to start for the Knicks and continues to play consistent minutes. Uh, as I'm recording this Tuesday night, he's having a decent game against uh, Detroit. Against Joel Embiid, that scares me a little bit. He could run into some foul trouble, but at 6,800, if Cantor's going to continue to play 30 minutes and going to continue to start, he has to be in consideration, especially when he's like under 7K. I think I'd rather get up to Aiton, but I do like Cantor at 6,800. And then the value centers really isn't a ton that I love. Maybe like Jarrett Allen against the Jazz, but probably not someone I'm going to be too heavy on today. Maybe Cody Zeller against the Hawks, but Zeller just doesn't have a ton of upside. Center for me, probably going to be trying to play a lot of DeAndre Ayton here. Mostly DeAndre Ayton, Cantor, and Larry Nance, also center eligible. I'll, just, I'll be playing those guys a lot. You could play AD at center as well. Uh, that's probably it for this position. I think that's it for the video, guys. So hopefully you did enjoy this video, and hopefully it did help you. Um, if you enjoyed the video, just make sure you click that like button. I would appreciate it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. If you do have any questions, feel free to hit me up on Twitter at the DFS underscore GOAT, or you can leave a comment down below. I will get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, but yeah, guys, good luck tonight on this 10-game slate. We'll see you in the next video. Peace.